So Guang Gong is a professor in Department of Electrical Computer Engineering at the University of Waterloo. She is a university research chair and an IEEE fellow. Her research activities are in the security and privacy issues in various systems, including health data. So thank you for joining us this morning, Guang. So I have to stand here. Okay. So in the last night event, uh, we have talking about uh, uh, not those uh, trust. So how we built the trust. So basically, uh, then uh, a lot of questions is come come out from the governance. But here I will talk about the trust, which is building from the technology. And in last night, the event, we also heard about maybe technology is there for healthcare. Then here, I want to point to something which is not there, okay? So I wanted to go through uh, the problems and the challenges for implementing security and privacy in health data. Then I will look at uh, our proposed solutions. In order to do so, I wanted to introduce you the new technology, which is blockchain. And I will use Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency network to demonstrate this idea. Then I will show you how you can provide the privacy for blockchain. If healthcare will adopt these options for privacy preserving. So this crypto tool, we call the zero knowledge proof systems. Okay. Then I will show you some of our new findings. Then finally, some conclusion remarks. So this is currently uh, technology we have. So if we said, okay, we want the confidentiality of our data. So what technology you want to use? Of course, you possibly encrypt it. Then you will do access control. Then you will do the entity authentication to let someone in. So how you do entity authentication? Basically, you ask someone, what do you have? Then they, someone said, oh, I have the key, which I shared with you. So this is the trust established by technology. This is cryptographic technology. Okay, then of course, you could knock something physically, right? Uh, like you have the data center, and then you have a bunch of computers there, you have multiple doors knocked that. Then that's your physical security, right? Then how about the integrity? They said, oh, we have also have tools for example, naive way you do backups. And the, but the most strong, you do the uh, message authentication. So which is the cryptographic method or you do digital signatures, right? And the, how about your data want to share with the third party? So this is a currently we have, we call the single sign on technology. So currently, for example, you want to access some website they said, oh, you could use in your Google credentials. Then this is, uh, we call it open identity or open authorization. The question is, uh, are they enough? We look at the, what's the fact here. Internet for medical things, how your doctor gets the data. Most of come out from those instruments, right? So that's why, uh, except uh, internet of things, they def add this medical internet of things. And, uh, you have so many of those smart devices. Uh, we already seen from last night at the event, uh, which mentioned that uh, except uh, those uh, hospital collect uh, patient data, like uh, Google, Microsoft, uh, Amazon, they also collect your data. Okay. So then those uh, basically become the backbone of the healthcare. Then your AI also adds another dimension of risk. Yeah, 
than cloud services, do we trust our health care data or go to the Google or Amazon's cloud service center? Yeah, so which means the current technology for sure is not enough. So what we need, so basically is a diversity of the data, which is hard to, uh, to even to be securely stored, then also shared. Also the new principles, person-centered data by design. So if you're using those concepts and the patient is centric approaches, okay, then how you retrieve and share those data, which will be cause multi-state holders, for example, for individuals, clinic, and the analytic access, how they can access those data and the use also including your cross provinces, right? Yeah, or not. But the question is basically is when you store the health data, you do not currently, of course, you store in the plain text, but I believe in future you should not do this. You should store in the encrypted data. So which means even the hacker, break into your system, they cannot see actual data. This is a, a scrambling data, okay? So that's, uh, but how you can share once you do this. And uh, another is like the, our first speaker and the privacy problems. For example, like the patient's and locations and how many times he visited the doctor's node and the traffic of, uh, in interactions uh, and so on. So he wanted to preserve those secrecy, even doctor's privacy, okay, such as some preparatory treatment. So if that's we consider those cases, uh, and uh, those are very challenging problems, which means uh, we need new technology. Okay, so here, in this talk, uh, I will provide you one approach called the blockchain approach, because this is a completely new technology. Before that, uh, we do everything is centralized. We also consider uh, it's uh, more secure. However, due to those uh, challenging problems, uh, then we consider we have um, some problems uh, we need looking for the new technology. So blockchain, we could consider as a networking system to store a data. So that also can be described as the database shared um, among multiple distributed uh, nodes and the data stored on it is highly unforgeable, but verifiable and accessible and transparent without need of any public trusted authority. Okay, so then also we could uh, uh, look at the property. So basically they can provide the trusted consensus, uh, computation and the immutable data uh, among untrusted entities. So that's the most important uh, property for the blockchain. Although they are distributed system, this is the property they added. Okay. So for the blockchain technologies, we have uh, basically three basic components. First is what we call the transaction. So this is all operations on the legal system. And the second is what we call the block. So those block is contain transactions, also who is sending, who is receiving. And the third concept is chain. So each block is chained in the timely order. So nobody can change this. So basically is you have that 
each transaction and you put into the block, then we're using some technology we call the hash. So you hash the each block chained together. Okay. So if someone wants to change this block, then he has to redo all of those future blocks. But in the standard way, those blocks are already growing. Okay, so that's why they cannot redo everything. So once you put data, once you put on, it's unchangeable because this chain the properties. And uh, how every entity in the networking agree on the single record, for example, your health record, then this runs through something we call the consensus protocol. So in the old P2P system or decentralized system, they basically running the Byzantine fault protocol. And the Bitcoin, they create the new one called the proof of the work. So it involves the heavy computation to get those hash values. Then they have the different blockchain networks, public chain and the permission chain and the consortium chain and the private chain. So those depends on the, how the uh, degree of the uh, decentralization, also your, your leader system, how the transparency it is. Uh, so those define the, the performance for the different uh, blockchain systems. Okay, so now we look at the uh, example, which is uh, a Bitcoin. So how we do the digital transfer and uh, transactions. So traditionally, this is done by the third party bank standing in the middle, right? So what is the bank's functionality? So the bank's functionality, they do the entity management. They do the transactions, also prevent double spending, okay? So can we implement this by cryptography? Answer is yes, right? So that's why all those uh, blockchain network, uh, uh, those uh, uh, those uh, Bitcoin called the cryptocurrency. The reason is uh, those functionality is replaced by cryptographic functions. Okay, so we look at the example. For example, Anis, uh, he has his uh, public key and uh, we call this the PKA. And this is represent his account, uh, account information or his identity. So he wanted to send the three Bitcoin to B, which is Bob. And Bob has his uh, private key and the public key pair. And he will digital sign Bob's public key and the amount. And this single nature chained together, with, which is a digital coin defined in the uh, Bitcoin cryptocurrency. Okay, so basically a coin is a chain of the digital signature. Then once you have this uh, and the miner or that user in the system, they try to look at that hashtag, which is a computationally expensive operation. The one who first computed that, then he broadcast that then the other node just to do verification. So then that block will be in the blockchain. And this miner who, who is the first one get hashtag will be awarded uh, for the a cup of the uh, Bitcoin. Okay. So because this is a digital single nature and no one can alter that. And uh, then every node will do this uh, verification. So you, we look at you back to here. So no one can alter, can alter that. Also, no one can do double spending. The reason is once you put into the block and this chain continue growth, if managers node want to, for example, he paid Bob $3 and later on he paid back $3 to his own account then he has to reproduce all those blocks. However, he cannot do this heavy computation because this chain is still growing, 
then he never catch the growth of this chain. So that's how the double spending is uh, uh, prevented. Okay, so, but what is the question? So you see who transfer how much money to whom? You see any transfer three dollars to Bob. Those are public information because validate need this information to validate this transaction. So which means you do not have any privacy. However, this is a merit of Bitcoin. So transparency. However, for some applications, we want some privacy. For example, you don't want to anyone knows how much money you have in the bank, then you do not want to other people learn how you spending your money, right? So those are the privacy problems. Okay, then the tool, new tool, we call the zero knowledge proof systems. So zero knowledge proof system is nothing. So basically it's, a, I tell you something, I can convince you this is correct, but I won't review anything. So this is called the zero knowledge proof system. And especially then so we have the one set of system called the zero knowledge succinct non-interactive argument, argument of knowledge. Okay, so this is uh, uh, designed for the arithmetic circuit proof systems. Okay, so in the Bitcoin blockchain, so every those miners will see it's uh, shared data, transaction data. It's like encrypted data, but it is not. So, but the verifier can be convinced that Alice want to send three dollars to Bob, but this is not in the plain text. Is in the zero knowledge proof system. He just proof Alice just proof to the Bob, uh, not proof the Bob, to proof to every validator or miner in the system. He will send the three Bitcoin to Bob. Okay. Okay, so we did some work along this line. Three works I want to mention here. First, we pro proposed a new uh, ZK SNARK systems. So currently, it's most efficient uh, systems. Then this is also post-quantum secure. Uh, what does that mean? So quantum computer, we say, oh, not there yet, right? What is the post-quantum uh, cryptography? Which means uh, even if you have a quantum computer, you cannot break those systems, okay? Then uh, we also invited uh, the system we call the supply. So this is uh, uh, anonymous auditing and the validating, uh, validating health data, okay? So in this work, basically, we separate the authentication and also reaching and the storage into two different phases. So one is running on the running on the blockchain, could be public blockchain, another is running on the uh, storage blockchain. Okay, then we provide the proof by the their knowledge proof. And the third work, uh, basically, we speed up uh, the known algorithms, uh, for example, for the zero cache or either way, then we can speed, speed up 3 to 20% of improvement over the current systems. Okay, so this is a general framework, uh, we think, but I did not talk here. So currently, possibly we were thinking the patient also uh, provide his uh, authentication authorization confidential uh, also credentials over the blockchain. For example, if we want to permission the blockchain that can happen later. But we have another decentralized storage, another blockchain. So that depends on the, uh, like the regulation between the uh, patient and the hospital. But if we think uh, all data generated by patient belong to patient. Then in this scenario, the patient will place data over the another blockchain. Then you will have 
research organizations and the, the insurance companies, we think they all will participate as a validator data in the blockchain. Okay, so they are part of the blockchain. So the existing existing hospital, we already have those uh, data system there, then those will become the entry load in the blockchain system. That's what we were thinking. Okay, so for the concluding remarks, uh, so I mentioned uh, we, we need uh, privacy is need whatever which type of the blockchain, even that's a private blockchain. Why is it the case? So this is uh, the case uh, resembling 40 years ago of our password login system. Okay, so do you store the plain text on the server system 40 years ago? Yes, but now, no. So this is uh, uh, even that's private blockchain or permission the blockchain because all vegetators see all data flow. So that's a privacy we need it. Okay. And uh, Shortabilities, if we talked about uh, trust, also sharing the data. Then if that's the case, then you need a certain decentralized system, not completely centralized system. Like I mentioned, do we trust our data go to the Google storage? Then those are the questions. And, but of course it has the problem. The reason is zero knowledge proof system before blockchain, just uh, purely theoretical research, stay in the crypto shelf for more than 40 years. No applications. Only this blockchain applications, the, we look at the tools, found that, okay, this is suitable. Then people start to implement. However, we need efficient and optimized implementation for at hardware layer, software layer, and the proctor layers. Those are not there yet. So those are the barriers. So I believe what I introduced here is more like the future technology, I hope, but I hope I conveyed something I stopped here. <laughs>